Hello and welcome to today's Knowledge Share. Today I want to demonstrate a walkthrough of my latest article on how you can go about accessing Dynamics data directly from T-SQL, specifically from a SQL server that doesn't have native linked server access or is outside of the trusted domain. The reason you may want to do something like this is if you have an integration or data synchronization requirement with third party applications. More information and technical documentation is available using the links at the end of my video. There is no native command in T-SQL to issue web requests. So therefore, the first thing that we need to do is to create a SQL Server CLR assembly that's going to be able to allow us to make those HTTP GET requests to our REST service from T-SQL. We're looking at the code for our assembly here, and as you can see, it's relatively simple and lightweight. It contains one primary method that we'll be using from our SQL scripts called HTTP GET. This requires two parameters, an inbound parameter, which will be the URL that we wish to invoke, and an outbound parameter, which will be the response after invocation of that particular URL. We have an attribute, which is decorating our outbound parameter, which will perform the conversion from the .NET string type to an nvarchar max data type. This will theoretically give us an upper limit of two gigabytes on the size of the response string that we can return back to SQL. The main body of code within the method is standard .NET code for instantiating and invoking a web request object. I've got two extra lines here at the end of the routine which will do some basic string replacement for standard XML data types. Once you've compiled the assembly, you need to copy it to SQL Server. The location is not important, however, it's always useful to place all customization utilities together. Here in this example, I've chosen to use the Tools bin folder. There are now several steps that you need to go through in order to use the new assembly. These are listed here and explained in greater detail in my blog. The first thing that I'm going to do is grant myself administration access on the database. Then I'm going to enable CLR functionality within that database. Then I'm going to enable the trustworthy property on that database. What that does is allow the SQL instance to trust that database and all of its contents. The next step is to register the new assembly within that database and I'm using the path where we previously installed the new assembly. The next step is to create a stored procedure wrapper for the new assembly and the stored procedure wrapper must have the same signature as the CLR assembly. Okay, so now we can test it. And I'm going to test the new stored procedure by invoking a call to a well-known website. And as you can see here, it's returned the HTML from our test website. Now SQL Server has the ability to use our REST service. If you cast your mind back to previous videos, then you'll know that we have a REST service that's connected via this method here directly to Dynamics, which has the ability to execute pass through X++. I'm going to switch over to the AOT now just to illustrate the X++ that we're hoping to execute within our SQL scripts. I'm doing a very basic query on the cust table and I'm just returning all the customers which are cust group EU, our European customers. As I'm iterating around the loop, I'm building up an XML string. Part of this XML string will include the account number, the customer name, and we're executing some business logic. I'm retrieving the current balance in sterling. Let's go ahead and execute this job. As you can see, it's returning an XML packet. 
I change the parameter for the customer group and re-execute this job it's actually returned a more lengthy XML packet this XML is, to, is what we're hoping to consume within our SQL script it's in the same format that the tsql open xml command is expecting and it will allow us to transform this data into a sql dataset now that we have the infrastructure in place we can start executing x++ within our tsql scripts in order to extract dynamics data here is a sample script that will demonstrate a simple data harvesting process i have my script variable here that contains my yet to be defined x++. On this line I construct the URL that we're going to be issuing to our REST service and this line contains the invocation of our CLR method that we've just installed which will pass through our x++ to the Dynamics AOS and receive the response in that variable there. I strip out some unnecessary tags and then I use the SP XML prepared document stored procedure to create an in-memory representation of the XML that's returned from Dynamics. I then use the open XML command to query this in-memory document. I need to be careful to choose the correct X path through the XML document and define and cast properly all of the nodes within that X path. Now let's switch back over to the AOT where we had our script that's going to provide the XML that we need for our open XML command. Let's go ahead and copy it and paste it into our tsql script. I need to do some character replacement on apostrophes because of the way tsql handles string concatenation. And I need to do just one more thing and get rid of the info log message because this is going to become more of a batch process. Okay, that's all the modification that we need to do. We should now theoretically be able to execute our script. And hey presto, we have a data set that's been returned back from Dynamics. Let's go ahead and change one of the parameters just to show you the flexibility and the speed of this type of solution. I'm going to see if I can return all of our domestic customers. Let's go ahead and execute again. And as you can see, it's brought back all of the customers which are domestic just by changing the X++ directly within tsql. There's been no need for any recompilation of any WCF or redeployment of any AIF services or any intermediate .NET modules. The final thing to demonstrate is the ease at which you can extend an integration solution like this. Currently I'm only returning three fields from the CUST table. One of them is a derived business logic field. If I needed to add an additional field then it would simply be a question of supplementing the X++ script up here and including the new field within our open XML statement. I'll go ahead and add the customer group to our XML. Just need to find the right place to insert our code. Okay, so I've added a new attribute to each XML node that gets returned, the cust group, and that's obviously bringing back its data from the table. Now, all I need to do is add an additional line to our open XML command called cust group. And I'm just going to ensure that it's got the right amount of characters and I don't think cust group is going to exceed 10 characters. So that's it. With two modifications to our tsql script we theoretically have enhanced our integration or our data harvesting procedure. Let's go ahead and execute that. And as you can see, we now have the cust group returned as part of our data set.